Well, let me begin by thanking you for a very good question. And I think that this whole question of explanation is very important. There will be some theologians uh, who would say that um, religion explains nothing. I mean, I want to make that clear, that there is a school of thought which says that. I, I would take the view, which I think is very clear from what I've just said, that while maybe the primary focus of, of theology is not explanatory, it unquestionably has an explanatory element. And I, I welcome that, and I've been emphasizing that in this lecture. So what do I mean by explanation? How does that relate to um, scientific explanation? Well, I think one of the easiest ways of beginning to answer this question, because it, it is a very good question, is to think of that um, classic example of scientific explanation, which we find in the works of Isaac Newton. And what Newton was trying to do was this. In effect, he was puzzled by a number of observations. For example, the planets orbiting regularly around the sun, and also objects falling to Earth. Uh, well, apples, of course, although that particular aspect of the story, I think, has been over-exaggerated a little bit. But in effect, Newton was saying, look, there are various things I see happening. Uh, planets orbiting the sun, objects falling to Earth. I can see a way of casting a big picture which actually shows that those are the, simply the same thing happening in different ways. In other words, it's all about gravity. And Newton was very nervous about gravity because he couldn't see it, he couldn't taste it, he couldn't prove it was there. But in fact, he was saying, look, if there is this thing called gravity, then things that were previously thought to be completely disconnected and unrelated suddenly come together as aspects of the same picture. And that, I think, is quite a helpful way of thinking about um, scientific explanation. And in modern philosophy of science, that's what unificative explanation is all about. It's only one way of thinking about explanation, but it's to say that explanation is about giving you a framework in which things naturally position themselves so you see how they relate to each other. And theology does that, I want to suggest, very well. Now, you might say, well, of course, that's simply one notion of explanation. I fully take that point. Another notion of explanation is to say, well, to explain A is to say what causes A. You know, and that's, that's a very well-defined, very uh, traditional view of explanation. And that could be part of the picture as well. And, of course, it raises up this fascinating question, which I hinted at earlier, which is supposing we, we agree that the dominant model of explanation of the universe at the moment is that of cosmic origination in the Big Bang. How do we explain the Big Bang? What caused that? And you see, immediately that raises some very deep questions. I mean, for the Christian, there's quite a simple answer to explaining the Big Bang. It's called the doctrine of creation. For the scientist, I, I think that there's a rather agitated debate going on about this, which I, I look forward to seeing resolved at some point in the next century. But uh, you, know, you can see there's a very interesting interface there. My point is that the theology gives you this picture which helps you position things, which gives you a sense of how things connect together. It's not the same as scientific explanation, but there is something there that makes you think, now that I see things this way, it makes an awful lot of sense. It's not rationality in the sense of a cold clinical logic, but it is rational in the sense of actually bringing order to a sense of disparate observations and experiences. Thank you.